Hello everyone. I'm going to talk about our model flat manifold music VEE for human motion co-creation of music. First of all, let's listen to these two beats. How would you interpret between these two sequences? We can take a look at a more intuitive example given to images. How would you interpret between these two? We don't interpret in the pixel level. Instead, we encode the, the images into low latent dimensional space. Then we fed the trajectory there. Then we get a point on the trajectory and project it back to the image uh, space. Probably we can get this image. For music data, it's similarly. We can use a generative model to achieve this. So here, we have an encoder. We can encode the music data um, from the observation space to, the, to a low dimensional latent space. Then we interpret here and project it back to the observation space. We can use different uh, architectures for the encoder and the decoder. Here we follow the music VE model. Uh, we have bidirectional uh, RNNs, and uh, for the decoder, we have uh, hierarchical RNNs. From there, we output a conductor, and for each conductor, we output a one bar music data. However, this kind of generative models often have problem of smoothness in the latent space. For example, here, the left side and the right side, the data are quite different, but they may uh, be close to each other in the latent space. If we interpret from the left to the right side, really any, uh, we may have abrupt change in the observation space, especially when the, the training data is missing in this area. So, the goal of this study is to generate a smooth uh, latent representation of music. Before talking about how to generate a smooth latent space, I would like to introduce Riemannian geometry in VAEs. Given a velocity here, if we integrate it, we can get the length of a curve. Here, gamma is a curve in the latent space, and f is a function in our case. It's a decoder of the VAE. Following the chain rule, we can rewrite the velocity as here, the Jacobian, and the velocity on the curve of the latent space. And we can get a Riemannian metric tensor G, which is equal to Jacobian transpose times Jacobian. We can have the definition of Riemannian distance with geodesic. We minimize the length to get it. If we want to have a smooth latent space, we can preserve the distance of the model, which means the uh, given any two points, um, the Riemannian distance is approximate to the Euclidean distance in the latent space. If we take this back into the definition of the latent length, um, we can get the matrix tensor is approximate to uh, an identity matrix. The Riemannian matrix tensor has many intrinsic properties. For example, it can measure the local angles, length, sur surface area, and the volumes. And the determinant of the metric tensor can show the sensitivity of the model. Uh, for example, um, if we have a large value of that, um, with a small change in the latent space, we have large change in the observation space. How do we do the distance preserving? We add the regularizer into the loss of the VAE. So here is the regularizer. We have the metric tensor. And uh, uh, in practice, we uh, regress it to a scale of identity. C square is a uh, um, constant. 
Note that we cannot ignore the low density areas. Um, note that we cannot ignore the low density area if we want to have distance preserving for the whole latent space. However, uh, because of the limitation of the training data, uh, we uh, we always have low density area in the latent space. We use a method uh, which called mix up to augment the data in the latent space. Uh, the, the method is simple. We just give uh, uh, use uh, two data points and the randomly interpret uh, uh, between them. Then we get a, a point from there and we add it to the regularizer. I'm going to show the experiments on drum data set, but you can also find the results of piano and the channel in the paper. Uh, here we have nine uh, categories, so we have nine hits and the cor corresponding velocity and offset. So we have 27 dimensions. Um, in this result, we use two bars um, and we split the two bars into uh, 32 frames. Back to the question at the beginning, how do we interpret the two bits? Here, these two bars is the starting point, and these two bars are the end point. We have eight points in the middle. We can see the pattern that it changes smoothly. We also have numerical results. We measure the smoothness using Hamming distance. With a small number, it's more smooth. Uh, we can see from here, if we increase the latent dimension, usually we have more smooth latent space. But for our model, even we use a very small uh, latent space, we can have better smoothness compared with the baselines. Our model can also improve the attribute vector. Take the density as an example. We can find the high and low density data in the observation space. And then we project this data into the latent space. Then we can find the center of the uh, two kinds of data. Then we can have this vector here. Uh, in this example, the middle two bars are the data we have, and the left side is minus uh, the attribute vector, and the right side is plus the attribute vector. Again, we have numerical results for this. Um, we compared the correlation of the attribute vector and the uh, distance in the latent space. Um, if the number is one, uh, it has high correlation. If the number is zero, it means there is no correlation. We can see that our model performs best. Using our model, we have drummer model interactive demo. The human drummer and our model alternate outputs to bars. We input the human to bars into our model and in the latent space. We have a previous data point and the current data point. We, then we have a vector. Along the vector, we sample a point around there. 
um, then we take this point as the output of the model. You can see on the right side, this is a three latent dimension. In our model, we use 32 latent dimension, uh, but for the visualization, we use a UMAP to project the 32 dimension into three latent dimension, but we don't train this in our model. This is just for visualization. And we can see different colors uh, on the latent space. They are the data point from the human and the model. You can find this full demo in this link. If you are interested in the concert, you can find it in the lower link. Conclusions. We propose the model for smooth and meaningful linear integration of music data, and it can be intuitively used by a drummer. Thanks for listening.